hard in a positive way with that. When people do make mistakes, it's not the end of the world. We're not going to toss them to the wind. We're going to say, how can we, again, grow through this and make this a positive experience and go through it? In our world today, there are so many negative things going on that you want to protect your child from what is out there. And if the child is safe in their environment and they feel comfortable, they're going to succeed. That was one of the number one things when, when we talked to our students is that they feel safe. It's, it's a comfortable, safe place to be. And when they have safety, they can learn better. On issues of dress and lifestyle, Seventh-day Adventists take a fairly conservative approach. Some of our schools require uniforms and all enforce a dress code that emphasizes simplicity, modesty, and good taste. Adventists energetically promote the importance of a healthy lifestyle, and you'll soon discover that food service options are strictly vegetarian and that the use of caffeine is discouraged. I believe that when kids are dressed for success, that they will feel more successful, and when they're preoccupied with wild fads and crazes, they're not going to be as focused on what they need to do. So I think that's one reason we have uh, stricter dress codes. Most Adventist schools would have a no jewelry policy because they teach a conservative lifestyle. It's part of their belief and part of their um, religious belief not to adorn yourself that anything that would take away from adorning God. We choose to be a vegetarian school. We believe it's a healthier lifestyle. That's another thing I like about Adventist schools. They stress health, which is very important. When you stop and think about it, you know, the only semi-negative thing you can say about a school is that they don't serve meat and they discourage the kids from drinking caffeine. That's not such a bad thing. But it's more than the rules that make Seventh-day Adventist schools unique. Our curriculum, in fact, everything we do, is Christ-centered and Bible-based. Bringing Jesus into the lives of first and second graders just is like a golden thread that goes through the fabric of the whole day. Every morning we start off with worship, devotions, um, a personal relationship with Christ, how you treat others. And uh, that has a tremendous impact on a child. Before each and every, every exam, we start with prayer. Sometimes the students want to have a couple of uh, prayers, sometimes seasons of prayer, before we go into major exams, but that's okay. If we just have a Bible class, then we're teaching only religion, and I think here we're trying to teach a way of life. Service is absolutely crucial in the Seventh-day Adventist curriculum. It prepares them, I think, for being participants in the world. I think our children have been encouraged to bless the community and um, to show their Christian love in a very tangible way. What we do here is, is Christianity. It's not a closet thing at all, and everyone is proud about the religion and proud about loving Christ and serving Christ, and to teach in that environment um, is an incredible experience. I can stop a student if they're having a problem, and we can pray. And oftentimes we find solutions through the Word of God. I can incorporate the principles of Christian living throughout the curriculum. In each subject, I always bring in the aspect of God is involved. As a history teacher, I do bring in the fact that scripture is history. I show them the plan that Jesus has in history, and I let them know that not only does he have a plan in history, but he also has a plan for their lives. I think this is a wonderful time to expose them, not only to the ABCs, but to expose them for something that will prepare them for eternal life. I want my kids to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You can have a 4.0, you can have a state championship in basketball, you can have state championships in band, you can have computer-aided drafting, biochemistry, but if they don't get to heaven, we've missed our mark. Seventh-day Adventists share a great deal in common with most Protestant denominations. For instance, we believe in the soon return of Jesus Christ, in baptism by immersion, and in the awesome gift of God's grace. There are also some differences. The most obvious of these is the Sabbath. Seventh-day Adventists worship on Saturday, the seventh day, a special time we believe God set aside a creation for rest, relationships, and spiritual refreshment. Academic, athletic, or social events will not be scheduled from sundown Friday night to sundown Saturday night. As a parent, it's perfectly appropriate for you to question the role unique Seventh-day Adventist beliefs will play in the education of your son or daughter. We're confident that you'll experience an atmosphere of openness and acceptance. We were aware that there were some differences 
and we were very we felt very open to be able to talk with the principal and the teachers about the concerns that we had. We're Christians and it's a Christian education and so far the, the doctrine that has been taught is very in line with what, what I believe is a Baptist. Our family doesn't see it as quote unquote an Adventist school. It's a Christian school. Your children get good foundational Christian teaching without uh, regard to doctrinal issues and practices. Yes. I love to have students in the classroom who have different perspectives than the majority of the students because that underscores exactly what I'm trying to get all my students to think about, which is here's what you value, uh, here are people who share your values, and here are people who, who see things from a different perspective. Listen to them. They don't treat Adventists and non-Adventists any differently. I have never felt that the teachers tried to convert um, either one of our children to their denomination from ours, which is Presbyterian. And they don't compromise their beliefs. Exactly. But they just don't enforce them on our children. Right. Now we feel we have some important things as Adventists to show and some very special things. And hopefully they'll see that along the way. But uh, there's definitely no pressure in that respect. It's there if you want, it, want to pursue it that they'll be happy to talk to you about it or if you want to find more information, but it's not like, oh, you should you know, Come. do this, and, you know, become an Adventist, become an Adventist. I'm an Adventist pastor, and I'm an Adventist teacher, and I'm an Adventist person, and so I believe that for me, but that may not be the same for all my students. When I have a Baptist in my class and a Lutheran and even agnostics or uh, other cultural religions, um, I don't try to convert them so much as get them to understand where I'm coming from and then help them make a decision for themselves because they have to live with it. They aren't in my class for the rest of their life. I'm not into indoctrination. I do think that it's more important to teach children to think and how to make choices and decisions based on the sound set of values and principles that govern and rule their lives that they're comfortable with, that they can answer to. I know what you want. You want your child to think. You want your child to be challenged. And in all of that, you want your child to be safe not just emotionally uh, or physically, which is the emphasis in a lot of schools, but you want your child to be safe spiritually. I would say if you're willing to have your kid seek Jesus, then we're a safe place. If you want a bunch of doctrines, whether it's your church or my church, then probably this isn't the school for you. We major on the majors and we minor on the minors. Mm -hmm. And our, if our children understand that, then there doesn't have to be a big deal about the differences. Seventh-day Adventist Christian education has always offered superior academic quality, caring teachers, a safe atmosphere of openness and acceptance, all woven together by a love for Christ and a desire to train young people to transform the world they will inherit. It's a winning combination that is truly safe and sound. If you want your child to have a good Christian a good Christian education, the Adventist education is the best way to go, I feel. As a parent, that's all you can do is teach them right and wrong and offer them the best education you can. You know, I really didn't come here to sell the Adventist school. Uh, actually, the only reason I'm here is because I feel that I need to give something back because they've had such an impact on my son. I can't say enough. I mean, I got what I wanted. I'm glad I prayed about it. I got where my son needed to be. Even though I'm not a Christian yet, but I believe that God led us to this school. It is expensive, and it's a huge sacrifice for us. This is not a little sum of money for this couple. But how do you put a price tag on the development of your kids? I feel it's an investment in their future. and whatever it takes to help their future become better than I feel mine is or was, I'd rather pay for it. We've seen what it's like for an education that's basically free and um, frankly we always thought we would keep our kids in the public school and just hopefully let them shine you know for the Lord there but um, we've just found that it might not be possible you know. We could have a, a house at the coast, we could have you know mm -hmm. a ski cab and things like that but you, aren't, you only have your kids once, you know, I mean, there's, there's always ski cabins, there's always other things, but you only get one shot with your kids, you know, and you got to make it the best of the first time because you might not get a second one.